Tomorrow night, America's Republican presidential contenders will be tested by this season's first primary race. Unlike last week's caucus vote in Iowa, the New Hampshire primary is a direct secret ballot, open to all voters, and is seen as a more significant test of a politician's electoral appeal. But perhaps its real importance stems from the media interest it generates and the potential it has to change the atmospherics of the race. North America correspondent Michael Brissenden reports. Life in New Hampshire has a certain rhythm to it. There are routine pointers to the flow of time. The weekly sermon, the first of the winter snow, and every 4th January the arrival of a predictable blizzard of presidential hopefuls. So we have an opportunity before us this week, uh, an opportunity I think that's been given to us from the Lord, and we need politicians, or forget the politicians, we need leaders, yeah, who will speak the truth and stand on the truth of the word of the Lord. The American people are tired of the partisan division. They have had enough. There is no trust left. I mean, there's a wide range of people who care about traditional values, who believe in God. But we're just getting started. We're looking forward to Tuesday for sure. <laughs> for all the intrusion, New Hampshire natives take their role as the first in the nation primary seriously. After all, this is a state that actually likes politics at every level. In the average New Hampshire town, you can vote for a small town, but nobody in it. You can, you can vote for uh, 120 different elected officials. Uh, John H. Sununu, the former governor of this state, uh, put, puts it a, in, a, in a very good way. He says, statistically, over the course of your lifetime, either you, your spouse, or your next-door neighbor will run for elected office. <laughs> so what that means is that uh, Granite State voters are, are uh, especially expert and engaged at the art of uh, elected polity. Mark Stein has lived in what they call the Granite State for the past 20 years and says he might even be considered a local if he stays another 50. But in that time, he's built a reputation as a celebrated conservative commentator. And he, for one, believes New Hampshire deserves to occupy this particular cornerstone of America's rich democracy. It's a kind of trained pressure cooker electorate that is good at sniffing out uh, who's got it and who hasn't. New Hampshire uh, is, is first in terms of uh, primary elections. I've often said that uh, Iowa picks corn, New Hampshire picks presidents. John Sununu, it seems, has an arsenal of one-liners. And like all good bon mots, they're grounded in fact. Until 1992, it was a given that whoever won New Hampshire would go on to lead their party in the following presidential election. And Governor Sununu has thrown his weight behind the favourite. And you're obviously very supportive of Mitt Romney. That's Why correct. is he the best candidate? Well, I really think you need chief executive experience. Uh, I think governors make the best presidents. I think that was clearly exemplified by Ronald Reagan. Conservative governors make almost perfect presidents. But like the weather and the thickness of the winter ice, politics, even in New Hampshire, has become a little less predictable. In 1992, Bill Clinton lost in the Democratic primary here. In 2008, Hillary Clinton beat Barack Obama here. And in recent years, the Republican race has also produced some upsets. And every candidate in this race, apart from Mitt Romney anyway, is working hard to produce one. But for New Hampshire, we would not have had Ronald Reagan. You were told repeatedly in 1980, we need to win. We just need to win. Please. Just vote for the winner who can get those moderate votes. And New Hampshire said, no, we need to restore America. All of a sudden, as John Sununu might say, Rick Santorum, the former senator from Pennsylvania, who only narrowly lost to Romney in last week's Iowa caucus, looks like the dog who caught the car. He's working hard, although his particular brand of moral conservatism doesn't seem to be resonating quite as well here as it did in Iowa. But there's another brand of conservatism from right field that is. So momentum is picking up. When I think of crowds like this and all the support we get and the cheering, all I can think about is freedom is popular. <laughs> 
Ron Paul has contested this election like he has many others, pushing his fiercely libertarian message. He pledges to end the Federal Reserve and return to the gold standard, to cut many government departments, including the Department of Education, and return the budget to surplus in three years. And he is also a consistent opponent of America's military engagement abroad. At 76, Ron Paul is the oldest candidate in the field, but he's also the one with the most support among young voters. Ron Paul says it himself, uh, you know, younger minds, and no offense to anybody, but they, they tend to be a little less corrupted and a little less settled in their sort of opinions. In a state with a motto that reads, live free or die, Ron Paul's message strikes a chord with a young audience that's looking beyond the establishment status quo. They have an agenda. We understand that agenda. Ron Paul wants to end that agenda and go back to what's right for the people of the United States of America. The young voters may be giving Ron Paul momentum here, but they're not necessarily committed Republicans. New Hampshire itself isn't necessarily committed Republican either. In presidential elections, it swings. But in Republican primaries, it is usually counted on to return a candidate that reflects the way the state sees itself, a safe, middle-of-the-road approach. So this is New Hampshire, relatively rural, white, and in Republican terms, at least moderate. Mitt Romney is expected to win here and do so easily. But expectations are now so high that if he doesn't, New Hampshire could backfire. And some believe that despite the polls, this state could still produce a surprise. The standard view of Mitt Romney is that he's got a ceiling. In, in Iowa, he got 25%. In other words, 75% uh, voted for someone who wasn't Mitt Romney. In that sense, he's the weakest front runner uh, of any uh, Republican field in some time. So the question is here, if he can't get above that, if he can't get in the 30s, if he can't get maybe 38, 40 percent, and he's still mired in those mid to high 20s uh, in New Hampshire, uh, then that is telling you something uh, profound about how strong a candidate he's going to be in the general election. If it's a test for the favorite, it could be the end for those at the bottom. John Huntsman had bet everything on a good result here, but so far he's not polling well. Newt Gingrich is also struggling. But just over a day out from the poll and 20% of voters here say they are still undecided. This is a small state, just over a million people. They may not all know who they're going to vote for, but they do all know that as the first state to hold a primary, they always attract a lot of attention. And in four years' time, they'll be happy to do it all again. That report from Michael Brissenden in New Hampshire.